trash could potentially put the quality of San Antonio's water supply at risk. And to keep that from happening, local organizations are coming together this Sunday to rappel down hundreds of feet to get rid of the debris. So Gary Schneidel, the president of the National Spillogical Society, the group's main focus says it's cave conservation. He says when rainfall runs off, it enters into more than 600 caves and thousands of sinkholes in Northern Bear County. Now those sinkholes in turn feed into our primary source of drinking water, the Edwards Aquifer. But when they're filled with trash, the water filters through it, picking up some possible contaminants, including chemicals that can enter into the aquifer. Caves that have been used as wow. trash pits and piles, caves and sinkholes both. We, we drink that water and we use it for a lot of other purposes. And so uh, it's in the community's interest to do everything they can to help protect the Edwards Aquifer. So Shindel says right now water quality in San Antonio is high, but they want to keep that they want to keep it that way and possibly improve it. And Sarah, you were saying that you and Justin actually did a wonderful case that mm -hmm. explains talking about the Edwards Aquifer. Yeah, it's about a 20 minute, I call it a Nat Geo episode, yeah. all <laughs> about the aquifer. You know, Justin goes down and cave, goes caving, goes nice. spelunking Look into at, one of those you caves. Guys. Uh, I start to talk to some salamanders and talk with <laughs> some salamanders. They don't say much back, but uh, we're really, it's a really great episode. You should check it out. We explain all about how the aquifer works. Case that explains the Edwards Aquifer. Again, only 20 minutes long. Let's go ahead and take a look outside uh, and across the state of Texas. Quite a bit going on right there, as you can see across the panhandle, some snow. And in uh, northeast Texas, toward the Texarkana area, quite a bit of rain as well. Now, this is all behind a cold front, which is currently working its way through south central Texas. So, yeah, let's take a look, closer look. Lubbock getting some snow and the Texarkana area getting some uh, healthier rains. We're going to be on the tail end of any kind of precipitation today. So, really, the chance for rain in San Antonio, only 10% percent for a stray shower uh, behind this front. Otherwise, it's going to be dry and the biggest thing you'll notice today are the winds. Take a look at wind gusts behind this front. In Abilene, winds are gusting up to 40 miles per hour. And today in San Antonio, we could see wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour. A lot of people going to be at the rodeo hanging onto their cowboy hats today because of those winds. Now, not a huge temperature difference behind this front. It's definitely significant. You can see that uh, up in uh, Amarillo and Lubbock, it's well below freezing. But Dallas is behind this front and only at 48 degrees. And here in San Antonio, we're at 54. Not a huge difference in temperature. Temperatures. Really, honestly, this front is just going to keep temperatures fairly steady today, and we're anticipating a high in the 50s around San Antonio. Again, Rock Springs is behind this front right now. It is not even 10 degrees cooler than San Antonio. It's 58 in Del Rio, 56 in New Valley, 61 in Hondo, 47 in New Braunfels. Kind of popcorn temperatures all across uh, South Central Texas, but generally in the 40s and 50s. Now, Take a look at the future cast wind gusts. We're going to start to see the gusts really pick up mid morning wind gusts from the north up to 35 to 40 miles per hour and then into the uh, lunch hour and into the afternoon. We'll see a few wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour. That's enough to toss some patio furniture around, especially if it's light. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on things, but just know that it is going to be very windy this afternoon. Wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour, but by sunset, we're going to actually see the winds calm down quite a bit. So after sunset, winds are going to calm down and we won't have to be dealing with the wind on Sunday. I mentioned that we're going to be on the tail end of the system for rain chances. Better rain chances east of San Antonio toward Gonzales, Victoria, the coastal plains, and even then only about a 20 to 30 percent chance for some showers. And then as we head into the afternoon, there could actually be a light mix of uh, snow up near Bryan College station and only a small chance for an isolated shower again well east of San Antonio. Chance for rain is only about 
percent in San Antonio. Not going to help us out by any means when it comes to drought conditions, which are expanding, especially out west. So just to recap everything I said today, 10 percent chance for a stray shower. Temperatures kind of hovering in the low to mid 50s all day long. Biggest story is going to be the winds. Winds gusting from the north up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And once we see the sunset at 621, uh, we'll be looking at a calmer wind conditions. The combination of calmer winds, clear skies is going to allow us to see a light freeze tomorrow morning. So plan accordingly if you have any uh, plants that need to be covered or brought inside and make sure your pets have a warm place to stay. We're likely going to see a morning low tomorrow right around 30, but even colder up in the hill country and out west. But Super Bowl Sunday looks great after the cold start. We'll have complete sunshine, 65 degrees for the high. Valentine's Day looks lovely. See what I did there? All right, and then on Tuesday, we'll be in the 70s. A small chance for rain Wednesday and Thursday. Hoping to bump up those uh, rain numbers as we get a better uh, look at Wednesday and Thursday. But again, it doesn't look like this is going to be our significant rain event that we need to bust through the drought. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 617, 55 degrees out. Well, Sarah was talking about Valentine's Day, and the countdown is on. And procrastinators will be shelling out more for oh. flowers if they can even find them. We'll tell you how much more you could be paying. All right, rest of the sports world finds out what Cowboys Nation already knew. The superstars in Dallas. Big awards coming. We're going to explain in just a bit. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, so this year's NFL Honors Show in Los Angeles just days before Sunday. Yes, Super Bowl 56 and two Cowboys got special honors. The event held Thursday. First Cowboys defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, he was selected at NFL's Assistant Coach of the Year. That's after he turned the Dallas defense around. He led the league in takeaways, and that was just in his first year on the job. Getting the most out of players like Trayvon Diggs, who tied the franchise record with 11 interceptions. Micah Parsons, remember the name, we are. He collected 13 sacks in his rookie season, and Randy Gregory, who tied his career high with six sacks in just 12 games. So here it is, as a result, Micah Parsons named the NFL 2021 Defensive Rookie of the Year. And for the second straight year, there he was with the long hair. Aaron Rodgers named the NFL's MVP. And he did not say what he's going to do next season. Remember, there's all that will he, won't he return to Green Bay. So there you go. Also, we're going to be talking about this throughout the morning. Spurs last night. Oh, my goodness. Rodeo Road Trip. Go Spurs. Go in Atlanta. So we'll have that and so much more throughout the show. But for now, 622, 55 degrees out. You ready for Valentine's Day, Max? Oh, I've been ready. Okay, so the cost of Valentine's Day bouquet could match the cost of the dinner. Whoa. That story is next. So we have an update to a story we first told you about back in December. QVC is now offering a reward of up to $20,000 for information about a massive fire that destroyed a QVC distribution center in North Carolina weeks before Christmas. So it all happened at the facility in Rocky Mount. More than 40 agencies from six local counties responded to what was a five alarm fire. More than 300 employees were working inside that center when the flames ripped through it. One person died. Their body was found a day later. At least 75% of the building was destroyed in the fire. Well, no one should be surprised. Supply chain issues are hitting the flower market just in time for Valentine's Day. While flower prices normally go up the week of Valentine's Day, experts say you'll likely be spending even more this year. And if you procrastinate it, keep in mind some florists are having trouble getting other supplies like vases and balloons. So their advice order early, a.k.a. probably now, <laughs> um, rather than waiting. That's true. All right, so uh, I, my parents' anniversary was two weeks ago. Already saw a bump in prices, but a little insider info for any people who are procrastinating. Uh, Central Market and Trader Joe's, great flowers. Beautiful they lost, flowers. They last a great time, and they're much more affordable than, like, the online places like well, 1 800 you flowers. Make, you can like make your own bouquet, and, and mm -hmm. the florist there can help you. Yes, customize well. it. They're very helpful because I know nothing. <laughs> 627, 55 degrees out. Okay, so with COVID, weather, and worker shortage, planning a trip or vacation can be tricky. Straight ahead, we break down how travel insurance can work for you and if it's worth the money. 
And coming up next, a car crash north of downtown, the jaws of life. We're also going to tell you a story about what's next with Apple. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 6.30 this morning, Saturday, February 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm not gonna lie, I was talking to our photographer, Steven, earlier, and I was like, oh yeah, what's today, like the 10th? He's like, it's the 12th, Max. It's the 12th. We're and running through February. Yeah, Valentine's Day is Monday, which yes. I know you've been preparing. Oh yeah, are you guys ready? Uh, did, yeah, sure. Did you get your significant <laughs> other gift? Do girls have to oh. do that? I know, okay, but Sarah Spivey, you're an overachiever, and I know you did. <laughs> I did, I did. Um, I'm really bad at that stuff. Yeah. No, I heard you got a card. That's that's right. That's a gift, right? The gift mm -hmm. of words. All I know <laughs> okay. is that if I wasn't prepared, um, I wouldn't hear the end of okay, it. Okay, but that's different. Why? I'm not gonna say. Okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I la ladies like to be spoiled, right? Typically, oh. yes. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. We have got a cold front moving through South Central Texas. Behind the front, you can see there is some precipitation up in the Panhandle. There's some snow and there's some rain across parts of East Texas. We are going to be on the tail end of this system. And so although temperatures are going to be cooler than yesterday, winds, wind gusts are going to be the big story today. Winds are going to gust up to 40 to 40 miles per hour today. So very windy outside. And and only a small chance for rain and I'll talk about that coming up in the full forecast. But for your weekend, know that today much cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 75 degrees. Today will be a lot cooler because of that front, not necessarily cold, but a lot cooler and very windy outside. Now tomorrow morning waking up with a light freeze, so time to think about bringing those plants inside, covering those up. Just a light freeze, not a hard freeze, but still cold enough uh, to make sure you want to have your uh, pets in a warm place to stay tonight. And then by tomorrow afternoon, though, it's going to be sunny and 65 degrees. So a nice weekend other than the winds today. We'll talk about rain chances today and what we can expect for the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a crash just north of downtown. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Do we know if anyone was seriously hurt? Good morning, Sarah. And unfortunately, yes, uh, several injuries have been reported in this crash, but this was the scene earlier this morning. Police tell us a driver was traveling south on San Pedro when it was T-boned by a driver of a white pickup truck driving on West Ashby Place. This all happening shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. The driver of the T-boned vehicle was unconscious and had to be rescued by the jaws of life. Police say both the driver and the woman seated at front were taken to the university hospital in serious condition. The woman in the back seat was not not hurt. Now, Max, I we're told the driver of the white pickup truck was also taken to University Hospital. He had a passenger at his side. She is expected to be okay. It was not hurt. Uh, he is being evaluated at this time under the suspicion of driving under the influence. Charges are pending. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Early voting for the March primary begins this Monday, February 14th, to get information on races, who's running, polling signs, and more. Just look at your screen right now and pull out your phone and your camera app. Uh, scan the QR code that's on your screen. It'll take you straight to ksat.com and scroll down the page and you can access all the election information. The last day of early voting is February 25th. And like Sarah was saying, early voting starting just this coming week. San Antonio, though, we've been a hot spot the last few days with politicians on the ballot making campaign stops here in the Alamo City. And later today, both Jessica Cisneros and Greg Kassar, they are set to receive an endorsement from New York Democrat Representative Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. All three will take part in a campaign rally today at the Paper Tiger. That's over there on North St. Mary's. Greg Kassar running for Congress in District 35, Jessica Cisneros up against Laredo representative Henry Cuellar in District 28. Cuellar slamming AOC's planned appearance, calling her a celebrity and saying, quote, this election is taking place in the 28th Congressional District of Texas, not New York City, end quote. All right, a lot going on this weekend. Steven Cavazos has the latest on what you need to know about weekend travel. 
If you have big plans this weekend up in Kendall County, you definitely want to plan ahead. We have some big closures out there that again, you're going to want to be aware of. Let's go ahead and take you in up to Kendall County there off of I 10. Now this closure is going to be a long one, a 56 hour continuous closure of the full main lanes of the I 10 and eastbound uh, travel lanes between State Highway 46 and US 87. Now this removal of this bridge will actually allow crews out there to start working on the new westbound State Highway 46 bridge construction that again will take some time, but this will all start at eight in the evening and wrap Monday morning. So let's take a closer look in as you talk about some travel routes there for drivers. Now the westbound lanes of I 10. Keep in mind that the frontage road traffic will continue through the State Highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now that's located near Fredericks Creek. Keep in mind off duty uniformed officers are going to control that traffic movement right at the State Highway 46 intersection. So be on the lookout for them. And if you are going to be traveling eastbound, let's take a look there because the frontage road traffic will continue through the State Highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now that's located west of the US 87 interchange. Another off duty officer again, keep in mind they're going to be out there controlling that traffic moving at the intersection there at State Highway 46. Again, as a reminder, this will all start at 8 in the evening Friday and will continue throughout the weekend and wrap up Monday morning according to TxDOT. And I stay with KSAT for the very latest on this construction up there in I-10. Thank you, Stephen. Well, Communities and Schools it is an organization with a mission to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. Recently, the program received a huge multi-million dollar donation, and that can mean a lot for our local Bear County schools. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA, Jessica Weaver, CEO of Communities and Schools San Antonio, is set to join us 8 a.m. right here on KSAT. We're going to be talking about the big multi-million dollar donation, what it means for our local districts, and how our local schools fare in comparison to others across the country. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Happening today is San Antonio's free landfill day. You can get rid of big bulky items by dropping them off at two different locations. The first is the Republic Services landfill that's off of I-10 near North Foster Road. And the second is at the Waste Management landfill on Coville Road. That's on the city's southwest side near Joint Bay, San Antonio Lackland and Medina Training Annex. Both locations will open today from 8 this morning until 1 this afternoon. All right, so as Many people saw an experience during the holidays. Traveling can be risky. Especially when it comes to money. You never really know if your trip or vacation will unexpectedly be canceled or be put on hold. So David Sears explaining how travel insurance can help, and he'll explain if it's worth it. Traveling during COVID has created new complications for people planning travel. And it's led to many choosing to buy travel insurance just in case trips get canceled or postponed. The Wall Street Journal recently looked at who needs insurance and what exactly it'll cover. Many travel experts recommend insuring trips that cost more than a few thousand dollars. But choosing the right plan can get tricky, especially with any COVID complications. If you were to contract the virus before travel, plans will generally cover a postponement or cancellation of the trip. But a usual travel insurance plan most likely will not cover a cancellation in a country you're going to that's closed its borders. And some policies offer clauses that will cover up to $200 a day if you test positive and have to wait before returning home. To help choose the best policy for you, there are aggregators that sift through the details of what's available. InsureMyTrip.com, TravelInsurance.com, and SquareMouth.com are just a few options. You often will have two weeks after buying a policy to change your mind and get a refund. Travel pros recommend using that time to sift through the details of the policy to make sure it's right for you. And that's also when you can add clauses to the policy to cover other areas of concern. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Time now just about 640, 55 degrees out. All right, we're taking you to Seguin to a popular barbecue Ooh. spot that is just pure te Texas. you got to say it like that. That's good. We have a preview of today's Texas Eats. All right, is coffee your pick-me-up? Yes, I'm drinking it right now. There you go, that's a big Yeti. Mm -hmm. All right, how about trying something different? We're sharing six ways to wake up without coffee? No! <laughs> I know we're gonna probably be, Jonathan Goethe will be live at a coffee oh, festival yeah. later, speaking of coffee. All right, 640, 55 degrees. Sarah Spivey says changes are coming today on the weather. She'll explain when we come back. All right. Welcome back. 
happy Saturday morning, super early. How much coffee do you drink as you literally have your coffee um, out? It's filled to here. That's not that bad. And this has three shots of espresso in it. Okay, that's bad. Yes. So we'll say like four. Bad. We'll say like four cups, <laughs> five cups. We we need coffee in this show. Yeah. And so while caffeine can help you get your body moving in the morning or kind of shock your brain, too much can also cause side effects. Wow. <laughs> yeah, as you're just as hungry back. as I'm chucking. All right. So in today's health minute, six ways that you can go without coffee. For some, the idea of giving up your morning joe may seem like a joke, but cutting back on caffeine can give your health a boost, says Nancy Farrell Allen with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You want to feel energized without really feeling stressed. Six ways to wake up without coffee starts with being well rested. Tips for cutting back on caffeine include getting hydrated, drink water when you wake up, and exercise. It can help get you moving in the morning. Getting outdoors or some upbeat music can also help. You can try aromatherapy as well. You can use a body wash that's maybe citrus scented. I am aware of a, of a body wash that actually is coffee scented. If that's your kick or your idea, that might help you, right? There are also coffee scented candles out there that might help you. Alan says fueling your body with the right foods can provide longer lasting energy. Breakfast and snacks should have both fiber and protein. Those two components really help to slow that metabolism or though the breakdown of those food items. And then thereby it, it gives us that steady release of those nutrients that help to curb our hunger. And finally, set yourself up for good sleep at night by giving your body some time to settle down. Alan says cutting back on caffeine may not be easy, but these simple tips make it possible. Following through and doing it is is another, you know, part of the equation. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. I do want to say all <laughs> those tips without caffeine were like mm -hmm. all Max Massey. Like, get up, Huge work out, aromatherapy guy. I don't really know what aromatherapy means. I don't means. either. I, I think it means like smell good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Smell good stuff. Smell, yeah, <laughs> smell good stuff. <laughs> Well, hey, guys, you might have heard there's something going on around San Antonio called the Rodeo. A oh. lot of people here in town for the Rodeo going to experience the Rodeo today. If you're heading out to the AT&T Center, know that it's going to be quite a bit cooler than yesterday. Yesterday, we got up to 75. Today, we're only going to be in the 50s for most of the day here. Uh, and even though that says 10 p.m., that should say 10 a.m., and that should say about 51 degrees. So keep that in mind. But it is going to be very windy. Winds are going to be gusting from the north up to 40 to 45 miles per hour, all because of this cold front, which is currently working its way through south central Texas. Notice, though, that there's not a huge temperature difference behind this front. In San Antonio right now, we're in the mid-50s, and it's really only 49 degrees in Kerrville. So although this is going to make us a lot cooler than yesterday, yesterday we were in the 70s, today we'll be in the 50s, it's not going to make it bone chilling outside. It is, however, going to make it very windy and humidity is going to drop behind this front. You can see the front a lot clearer when you look at the dew points. Dew points in the 30s in Kerrville, that's chapstick weather, and dew points in the 50s here in San Antonio. But very soon, those dew points will be dropping as that front moves through. And just now, the winds have picked up in San Antonio. Winds are sustained from the north at 15 miles per hour. That tells me that front is on our doorstep in San Antonio. Winds sustained at about 20 miles per hour up in Kerrville. But today, we're going to see winds gust up to 40 to 45 miles per hour behind that front. So it is going to be a very windy day. If you are going to the rodeo, you'll want to hang on to those cowboy hats. Tonight, though, winds are going to subside after sunset, and the combination of clear skies and calmer winds is really going to allow for us to get chilly in the evening hours. All right, satellite and radar. Although that front is moving through San Antonio right now, there's still quite a bit of precipitation behind this front, especially across areas in East Texas and then the snow from Oklahoma City uh, out toward the Panhandle. We're not anticipating any snow here in San Antonio, so no need to worry about that. But again, that front is going is moving through right now as we speak, and you can see that winds are gusting up to about 40 miles per hour in Abilene behind this front. So.
the windy conditions right on our doorstep. Very soon here, you're going to hear that wind howling. As far as rain goes, we really are going to be on the tail end of this system, so beneficial rainfall is not likely today. The further east you go, though, the better chance for rain. Gonzalez, Victoria, uh, DeWitt County, Lavaca County all have about a 30% chance for isolated to widely scattered showers. And then further up north toward uh, Bryan College Station, there could actually be a brief wintry mix, but as you can see, none here in San Antonio for us this afternoon. In fact, we'll be seeing clearing skies this afternoon and we'll see some sunshine. So uh, once again, winds are the big story today and the fact that it's going to be a lot cooler than yesterday. Temperatures are pretty much going to hover in the mid 50s all day long. Windy with gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And then as soon as the sun sets at 621, we're going to see those winds let up. Temperatures will drop like a rock and by tomorrow morning we will likely have a light freeze in the area. So light freeze temperatures in the upper 20s near 30 degrees around San Antonio up in the hill country and out to the west. But it really is going to be a beautiful day tomorrow after that morning freeze with highs in the 60s. So we need some rain. As you can see, the drought monitor really showing the stress uh, of a lack of rainfall, especially out to the west. But in the forecast in this upcoming week, really only small chance for rain Wednesday and Thursday. So not a great chance for rain in the week ahead, but we'll hope to bump up those numbers if, if we get better data suggesting that. But that doesn't look to be the case right now. And again, even though we start off below freezing Tomorrow in the morning, it's going to be a gorgeous day. High temperature of 65, sunny skies tomorrow. And on Valentine's Day, we'll be sunny and 70. I'm loving that weather. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. All right, we got brisket, we got Seguin, we have awards. Here's a preview of Texas Eats. My dream was to open a barbecue joint in another better place than Seguin, Texas, and I wanted to bring back the classics. You know, we're not going off. Oh, we use salt and pepper and post oak, but we want to just perfect it as perfect as possible. Yeah, we're throwing it down and uh, we're having fun doing it. We're using a nice wow. black Angus and we take pride in everything that we do here. This brisket is just by far one of the most tender briskets I've ever had. It just falls apart. You don't even need a fork. You don't need a knife. Wow, that is really good. Oh my God. It has a really nice bark on the outside, good smoke flavor, but that protein stands out. I'm gonna try the turkey real quick. I didn't even, I don't really need a knife for anything. <laughs> it just rips apart, but here we go. I'm gonna try the turkey here. Wow, my goodness. The turkey is super tender, nice and moist, has a good bark on the outside, and the smoke really accents the turkey flavor as well. I'm in. Yes. Time now, 651, 55 degrees out. All right, so Apple has a way to compete with other payment services. We'll tell you about their new feature. Good morning and welcome back. Apple now introducing a new way for customers to make payments. The tech giant says later this year, customers will be able to use a tap to pay feature to make a payment. Merchants just hold an iPhone next to the customer's iPhone or Apple Watch. This new option will also work for contactless credit and debit cards. Right, tap to pay will only work for iPhone XS models and those that come afterwards. Analysts say this is an attempt for Apple to try to compete with other payment services. I assume like PayPal, Venmo. So you just like put your phones together yeah, like an just airdrop? Like, give me your money. <laughs> Time now, 654, 55 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Via police investigating a shooting that took place outside of a club just north of downtown. This is what we know right now. It was close to midnight when they say a club security guard flagged down a Via police officer to assist in the situation involving three suspects. This happening at the bar scene off of Main Avenue in Maple. The Via police officer was able to run the vehicle's license plate and learned that that vehicle was stolen. That's when the suspects took off and because Via police have a don't chase policy, they weren't able to go after the car. As the Via police officer was speaking with the security guard about the incident. We're told the suspects drove back around and opened fire at the officer. The officer returning fire. We're learning one of those suspects showed up at University Hospital with a gunshot wound. He is expected to be okay and police say they have a pretty good idea who the suspects are. The case is still under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
front has moved through San Antonio. It's starting to get windy. Winds are going to be the big story today from the north, gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. Temperatures a lot cooler, too. We'll be only looking at a high temperature in the 50s. Looking at the next several days, we're going to have a morning freeze early tomorrow morning, but it will be a beautiful Sunday. 65 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow, rounding out the weekend with sunshine and really pleasant conditions. Valentine's Day looks good, too. Temperatures starting off near freezing in the morning, but topping off near 70. As far as rain chances go, only a small chance for rain Wednesday and Thursday. We'll keep you updated, of course. All right, so if you've plans to eat outside on Valentine's Day, it'll be perfect. It will be on Monday. Great out there. There you go. All right, we have an so hour long break and then go for it. We've been talking about coffee this morning, but we're not going to stop <laughs> as I'm like super energized. Um, Jonathan Cotto is going to be live at the coffee festival mm -hmm. happening today. And I'm really jealous that we're not going to be there, but Jonathan will be and he'll tell you all about how you can join in and drink coffee. Yeah, I think you've had enough coffee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're also going to have a story on why you might see that cup of coffee a little more pricey this year than last year. We're going to explain. So take an hour break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. We'll see you at 8. Live from KSAC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A shootout between a VIA police officer and multiple suspects after trying to help a nightclub security officer. Plus, Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto, and there's something in the air, but I don't think it's love. I think it's the smell of coffee. We're here at Travis Park at the 9th Annual San Antonio Coffee Festival. We're going to bring you all the latest coming up on GMSA. Let's get caffeinated. I'm here for it. <laughs> all right. 54 degrees at 8 a.m. this morning. We've had beautiful weather the last couple of days. Sarah Spivey says things are going to be changing. She'll explain in just a bit. All right. Good morning. 8 o'clock this Saturday, February 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Do you start with coffee? Oh, absolutely. Three. How many How many cups? Three. Is, no, I don't do coffee anymore. I do. Oh. I've upgraded. Oh, three. moving on <laughs> up. Three espresso <laughs> shots with steamed milk and some uh, stevia in there. Sarah's five, what about yourself? Oh, yeah, I do coffee. In fact, I've got my thermos right there behind me. Sarah does fancy coffee, too. You just said three espresso with some sort of fancy milk. Well, I it's bought an automatic fancy. coffee grinder, and Ooh. I do a pour-over coffee every morning. See, that's yeah, that fancy, fancy coffee. Every yeah. morning. Yeah. It's my, it's my moment of zen, right? Mm. All right, let's take a look outside. Winds have really picked up from the north. Wind gusts of up to 32 miles per hour at the San Antonio International Airport, up to 33 miles per hour in Kerrville, all behind a cold front that's moved through this morning. A 33 mile per hour wind, as I mentioned, up in the hill country in Kerrville. And today we could see winds gust up to 40 to 45 miles per hour into this afternoon. Notice that behind the front temperature temperatures are not dropping off uh, completely. It is still cool though. You know, yesterday we were at 75 for the high. Today we're pretty much going to coast where we're at right now with those winds from the north and temperatures staying in the 50s around San Antonio. Again, the big story today going to be those wind gusts gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. By sunset, though, winds will calm and we'll have a chilly night on our hands. So if you're planning on going to the rodeo today, know that it is going to be cooler than yesterday and very windy. We'll have a 10% chance for a stray shower through the morning hours into the afternoon. Skies will clear. And as I mentioned, temperatures are pretty much going to coast in the low to mid 50s all day long winds gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour today but by tonight bring the jacket with you because it's going to get chilly quickly we'll already be uh, near 40 degrees by 10 p.m a light freeze is in the forecast for the start of your sunday tomorrow but it does look like it's going to be a beautiful day in the afternoon more on your weekend forecast and that chance for a small chance for rain today coming up in a bit max Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a shootout north of downtown between a VIA police officer and multiple suspects. It ends with one person in the hospital. This is what we know right now. It happened around 1130 last night, and a VIA officer was flagged down by a security guard from a club near the intersection of North Main and Maple Street. The security guard said that there were several fights involving three specific suspects. The VIA officer ran the license plate of one of the suspect's vehicles. 
That vehicle came back as stolen. That is when the suspects took off from the scene. So VIA has a do not chase policy. So the VIA officers started questioning the security guard, getting more information about what exactly happened. As those two were speaking, the suspects drove back around and started shooting at the VIA officer. Now that officer returned fire. One of the suspects then showed up at a university hospital with a gunshot wound. Investigators right now still searching for the other two suspects, but police do say they have a good idea of who they're looking for. Turning now to the pandemic, COVID-19 cases are going down in Bear County. Yesterday, Metro Health reported more than 800 new cases. Eight more people have died from the virus. Meanwhile, there are 785 COVID-19 patients in the hospital, 211 in the ICU, and 112 on ventilators. The last time we saw numbers this low was about a month ago. And speaking of the pandemic, we got to talk about the vaccine. The FDA putting the brakes on the push for Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids under the age of five years old. Yesterday's move means another long months long delay for the shots for kids under five. The FDA has urged Pfizer to apply before its study was even finished on whether the young children needed two shots or three shots, citing the toll that the Omicron variant has taken on kids across the country. But yesterday, the FDA reversed course and said it needed to see how well three shots actually worked. Pfizer said in a statement that it expected that data by early April. A federal judge has handed our state's elections overhaul a partial defeat days ahead of this year's first primary. Yesterday's ruling by U.S. District Judge Javier Rodriguez here in San Antonio weakens new rules that make it a crime for election officials to proactively help voters get a ballot by mail. It orders Texas not to enforce that narrow part of the law against Harris County, which in 2020 tried to send more than 2 million Houston voters mail-in ballot applications during the pandemic. Texas is expected to appeal the decision. And this decision comes just days before early voting begins on Monday for the first in the nation primary on March 1st. There's a lot to consider and we have a lot of resources that you can read right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We're going to take a look at each party's ballot and we explain what you need to know regarding absentee ballots and voting by mail. You can also find a full list of early voting locations. It's on KSAT.com in the elections section under the news tab or Get this, we're in the 21st century. You can just pull up your camera from your phone, point it at the screen. That's a QR code. It'll take you right there. It's the first weekend of the 2022 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The grounds gates open at 8 a.m. every day. We have everything you need to know right now on KSAC.com. You can get it to by going to our website and clicking on the rodeo section under the entertainment tab, or just like Mac explained, just pick up your phone right now, look at the screen, open your camera app, that QR code uh, will take you directly there. The rodeo ends on the 27th. All right, and it's not just the rodeo today. If you're waking up around downtown, you might smell coffee. I love the smell. It might not be coming from your kitchen though. I mean, I like the smell of coffee no matter you know where it's coming from, but um, this one will be coming from the ninth annual San Antonio Coffee Festival. That's where Jonathan Goto is live this morning from Travis Park, where people are celebrating the art of coffee. That's right. We are on the perfect grounds for all coffee lovers to come out and enjoy a cup of coffee and the weather lends itself perfectly to really appreciate a coffee this morning, but with me is founder of the San Antonio Coffee Festival. Linda, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> thirsty for some coffee, I'm sure. Now, Linda, talk to us a little bit about how this all came to be. We're in the ninth year of this coffee festival. Well, I love coffee and San Antonio didn't have a thriving coffee community a decade ago. And I started talking to people and pulled them together and we met one Saturday, 12, 1, 12, and we had our first coffee festival. And every year it has grown and grown. This year we have 90 coffees to sample from 27 coffee roasteries in Texas. It's amazing. Over 25 roasters, over 80 different types of coffee. Linda, in one word, how would you describe this event? What are the people who are registered for this event are going to expect? Community. Well said. Thank you, Linda. We'll be visiting with you here shortly. Max, Sarah, we're going to continue uh, to hang out here at Travis Park, do a little sample, a little uh, taste testing. We'll let you know how that coffee is. Back to you in the studio. 
as, Austin's going to speed up his like he's going to be talking fast. I was going to say the morning. <laughs> there's 90 types of coffee, so it's a lot of samples. I'm here for it. All right, time now 808, 53 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Oh my goodness, rodeo road trip, and we get the W, and it's a new look team, kinda. Spurs in Atlanta, we got highlights on the big W, and that man, Mr. Triple Double. Taking a look outside with the roads. Just to note, if you're going to be driving along I-10 in the burning area, there's some major construction work that you need to be aware of. Our traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, has those details after the break. If you have big plans this weekend up in Kendall County, you definitely want to plan ahead. We have some big closures out there that, again, you are going to want to be aware of. Let's go ahead and take you in up to Kendall County there off of I-10. Now, this closure is going to be a long one, a 56-hour continuous closure of the full main lanes of the I-10 and eastbound uh, travel lanes between State Highway 46 and US 87. Now, this removal of this bridge will actually allow crews out there to start working on the new westbound State Highway 46 bridge construction that Again, we'll take some time, but this will all start at 8 in the evening and wrap Monday morning. So let's take a closer look in as you talk about some travel routes there for drivers. Now, the westbound lanes of I-10, keep in mind that the frontage road traffic will continue through the State Highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now, that's located near Fredericks Creek. Keep in mind, off-duty uniformed officers are going to control that traffic movement right at the State Highway 46 intersection. So be on the lookout for them. And if you are going to be traveling east, Eastbound. Let's take a look there because the frontage road traffic will continue through the state highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now that's located west of the US 87 interchange. Another off duty officer again, keep in mind, they're going to be out there controlling that traffic moving at the intersection there at state highway 46. Again, as a reminder, this will all start at eight in the evening Friday and will continue throughout the weekend and wrap up Monday morning according to TxDOT. And I stay with KSAT for the very latest on this construction up there in I. All right, 53 degrees at 813 this morning. You can see a little bit more cloud coverage than we've been seeing in the last couple of days. Sarah, that's because we do have a little bit of a cool front coming in. Yeah, you know, it's actually going to be quite a bit cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we were in the 70s and today we're going to be in the 50s. Uh, so not a particularly potent cold front, but definitely noticeable. As far as rain goes, though, we're on the dry side of the system. There is some rain, though, in the KSAT 12 viewing area. Let's take a look at radar right now. Most of that rain is off to the east and it's really light too. It's in the Gonzalez County right now. Just a light rain shower there uh, between Stockdale and Gonzalez County right along 87. Otherwise, there's some heavier activity off to the east toward Brenham, uh, but mainly off to the east is where the best chance for rain is going to be today. Here in San Antonio, we're really only going to carry a 10% chance for a stray shower throughout the day today, as uh, we'll really just be dealing with winds. Winds are going to be our biggest weather impact. Across the state of Texas, though, there is some snow now working its way into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Oklahoma City, Panhandle of Texas with some heavier rain showers for East Texas. Uh, again, decent amount of snow across parts of the panhandle this season. There's that front. It's to the south of San Antonio. It's moved through San Antonio. You can tell because the winds have picked up. Winds are from the north gusting up to 32 miles per hour in San Antonio. But look at San Angelo. Wind gust of 40 miles per hour. And I have seen a wind gust of 47 miles per hour out toward Abilene. So wind gusts on the order of 40 to 45 miles per hour are entirely possible in San Antonio today, especially from the later morning into the early afternoon. Again, temperatures behind this front, it is a lot colder in the panhandle, but when we zoom in to Bear County, not a uh, to Bear County and the surrounding areas, not a huge difference in temperatures. This is not going to drop our temperatures all that much during the day today. In fact, we're pretty much going to coast at 54 for the remainder of the day here in San Antonio and should be uh, in the low 50s for areas like the Hill Country this afternoon. As far as wind gusts go, as I mentioned, they'll be picking up throughout the morning. Wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour during the first part of the day here and into the afternoon, wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour from the north are likely in spots. So if you have any loose patio furniture or things like that, that's enough. That's strong enough to to knock those over and especially your trash cans if they're outside. So keep that in mind. But by sunset tonight, 
we're going to be seeing the winds calm down and the evening will feature chilly conditions with clear skies. All right, let's talk about that chance for rain today. Again, very little in San Antonio, minimal in fact, only 10% chance. But the further east you go, you can see more isolated to widely scattered activity is possible and even into the afternoon up near the Bryan College Station area there could be a few flurries but here in San Antonio we're going to be seeing clearing skies this afternoon and uh, high temperature once again right in the mid 50s so take a look at today's forecast as we wrap up everything the biggest impact is going to be the winds winds from the north at 20 to 30 gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour you know sometimes when we get wind gusts of 45 miles per hour greater we can end up with some localized power outages. We'll be keeping an eye on the CPS power outage map, but just know that today is going to be a lot cooler than yesterday. And in fact, by tomorrow morning, we're going to be seeing a light freeze around San Antonio. Forecast low is going to be right around 30, but up in the hill country could be in the 20s and out west in the 20s as well. Although the cold start, the day will begin cold tomorrow for Super Bowl Sunday, we are going to warm up really nicely tomorrow. Tomorrow's high calls for 65 degrees. So a beautiful day tomorrow after that cold start. Great on Monday as well for Valentine's Day. Only a small chance for rain Wednesday and Thursday, but that's not great news because we are under drought conditions. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spiber, thank you so much. 817, 54 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go. All right, it's been interesting. You know, we just lost Derek White. He got traded to the Celtics, and last night was DeJounte Murray's first game without him since the trade. It didn't distract him much. He set a new record for franchise triple-doubles for the Spurs. Let's roll the highlights. Speaking of triples, that guy right there, Doug McDermott, triple, and here, another one. All right, Devin Vassell stepping into the starting lineup, and he kind of killed it. Although, really, everyone in the Spurs killed it last night. They were on the road, rodeo road trip, taking on the Hawks, defense and offense. Remember the old Spurs ball movement? This is what it is about. Look at that, a transition. Oop, Spurs would lead 17 at halftime. DeJounte Murray would get his franchise record. That guy right there, record-breaking triple-double in the fourth quarter. He broke David Robinson's record. And the Spurs doing pretty much everything on the floor, inside, outside, transition and defense they would win 136 points to 121. We are far from done, though. Like we said, rodeo road trip. So we're going back to back. Next up, tonight, 6 p.m. I say tonight because after 5 o'clock, it's done nighttime. Taking on the New Orleans Pelicans, a new look New Orleans Pelicans at the Smoothie King Center. Yes, that is their real name of their center. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Are you throwing it back by the name? No, um, I just, they usually do pretty well on their rodeo road trip, but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. Mm, you I might just, just have, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Right, go Spurs. Go Spurs, go. <laughs> 822, 54 degrees now. All right, coming up next, we have a preview of today's episode of Texas Eats. Oh, wow. That looks Ooh, really good. Giving you a preview of Smack's Chicken Shack. Oh. Check out their wild chicken creations. This is the cheesy Thai loaded fries. It's gonna be a uh, house cheese sauce, Thai sweet chili sauce, um, the fries, chicken, and then our own house seasoning on top. That's the bite right there, y'all. A little bit of everything. Oh, I'm losing some pieces. Here we go. This one's my baby. I put it on the menu for a while it didn't sell, and then I was like, I'm keeping it on there for me, and now it's our top seller. Uh, that Thai sauce is what sells the whole yep. thing. That's good, man. That's good, right? Woo! All right. It's sweet, it's savory, it's creamy, it's a little salty. It's it's all the notes you want. It's unctuous and it has that umami. It hits you in the back. Yeah. You have found a good way to blend all those flavors together. And then the fries are nice and crispy as well, so you have a great texture on there. I would say this is definitely a shareable plate. Yeah. This is um, this is fantastic though. I think you really have found a niche in the game. Did you ever think you would have a chicken place only doing chicken? No, actually, I didn't. I don't know. I just, I didn't really have an idea of where I'd be when I came to cooking, but it just, it took off. I'm in. Anything with uh, French fries and cheese. You know, I'm it. just saying we could promote it better if you brought us samples. I would like a sample. Breakfast of Champions, chicken. 826, 54 degrees out. All right, there's still much more ahead on GMSA, including the latest on the tensions between Russia and Ukraine and how the U.S. is responding. Plus, a major crash overnight ends with three people in the hospital. We have the details when we come back. 
Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. 8.30 this morning, Saturday, February 12th. Thank you so much for joining us. Yesterday did not feel like February. It felt like middle of May and it was perfect. It was beautiful. I spent all day outside, mm -hmm. got some much needed sun. I felt like I was getting really, really pale. Were you wearing the big hat? Of course. Big sunglasses. Hat. And I also put sunscreen on mm. too because I felt like the sun was that strong, Sarah. Way to go, guys. You know, yes, we ha got up to 75 degrees yesterday with complete sunshine. Today, we're seeing clouds out there right now and temperatures are going to be quite a bit cooler. We're not going to get out of the 50s really today. The other thing, though, is that we will see some sunshine eventually this afternoon. All right, let's take a look outside right now. And as you can see, it is cloudy out there and winds are from the north at 18 miles per hour, gusting up to 32 degrees. A cold front has moved through. It's not a particularly strong cold front, but it is a noticeable cold front. Again, a couple of ways you're going to notice it. Temperatures in the 50s today and those winds are very strong. Winds are currently gusting from the north up to 32 miles per hour at the airport, up to 34 miles per hour at Lost Maples, up to 30 miles per hour in New Braunfels and a wider view here. Uh, you can see up to 36 miles per hour up in the Austin area and we're going to see these strengthen this morning. We'll see wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour and this afternoon 40 to 45 miles per hour. So it's going to be a very windy day today. If you have any light patio furniture that may get knocked around a little bit because of these wind gusts. But by this evening, winds are actually going to calm down and that's actually going to set up a chilly start to our day tomorrow. Uh, but just a reminder that with the windy conditions, any kind of outdoor burning is strongly discouraged. And there are outdoor burn bans for many of our counties across the KSAT 12 viewing area. As you can see here, the counties in red outdoor burn bans are in effect. So for this weekend, know that today is going to be on the cool and very windy side. We're going to be up to 55 degrees this afternoon with clearing skies into the afternoon as well. By tomorrow morning, starting off with a light freeze, 30 degrees, but a beautiful day. Day. In the afternoon, temperatures are going to climb into the 60s for your Sunday. Hey, we do have some light rain on the radar in spots. I'll talk about that in our chance for rain here in San Antonio today. It's very small. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, three people are injured in a crash near San Antonio College. Police say around two this morning, a vehicle was T-boned by a white truck at the intersection of San Pedro Avenue and West Ashby. One driver had to be rescued using the jaws of life. The passenger in that vehicle and the other driver were also injured in the crash. Police do believe alcohol may have been a factor and charges are pending. A woman hit by a car while trying to cross Southwest Military on the city's south side around 11 last night. She was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The driver did stop to render aid and will not be facing any charges. Police are ruling this an accident. Top stories this morning. The community alarmed by the level of child abuse we've seen. Two deaths in just the last week. Two children in two separate cases severely abused and tortured, allegedly at the hands of their own parents. Both children killed and it happened within a day of each other. Child abuse prevention advocate Yolanda Valenzuela says a phone call by family members or neighbors who saw the abuse or suspected it could have saved these children's lives. She worries that the severity of abused children is escalating here in our community. What they had to go through in their five or 10 years of life is incredibly sad. And what their siblings had to witness and will forever remember is extremely heartbreaking. A lot of people knew these things were happening, but they say it's not my business. It is your business. Saving the life of a child is everybody's business. See something, say something. If you suspect of or know of any abuse of a child, you're asked to call that number on your screen, 1-800-252-5400. You can find out how to do more to protect children in our community. You can reach out to Child Advocates San Antonio. We have all that information right now. Just head to ksat.com. In your morning headlines, the U.S. is preparing to evacuate its embassy in Kiev as Russia's invasion of Ukraine is increasingly looming. And 4,700 U.S. soldiers are in Poland to reuse its fellow NATO member of a U.S. defense commitment during this crisis. And back here in the United States, a crazy situation unfolding yesterday. A shooting ambush in Phoenix ends with multiple police officers injured. Nine officers injured in this situation. A man and woman are dead. This all started as a call for a woman who was shot. And when officers responded, mayhem ensued. An officer approached to help out at the home. The suspect, an adult man, invited the officer inside. 
And then as the officer approached, police say the suspect ambushed him with a gun, shot him several times. Police say that suspect was found dead in the home after an hours long barricade situation. The suspect's ex-girlfriend also found shot. She died later that day. A baby found inside the home not harmed. As for those nine officers hurt, all of the officers injuries, non life threatening. And a judge in Canada has ordered protesters to end their five day blockage at the Ambassador Bridge over the U.S. Canadian border. The disruption has impacted the flow of goods between the two countries. It's unclear when or if law enforcement will be sent in to remove the vehicles and people protesting the country's COVID-19 restrictions. If you have bulky items you need to throw out, Solid Waste Management will be hosting a free landfill day today for customers. It will be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at two locations, the Republic Services Landfill off of I-10 near North Foster Road and the Waste Management Landfill on Coville Road on the city's southwest side near Joint Base San Antonio Lacklin and Medina Training Annex. Some items will be accepted, include appliances, water heaters, furniture, and fencing material, construction materials, and industrial waste will not be accepted. You can find all this information, just head to KSAT.com. Well, Communities and Schools is an organization with a mission to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. Recently, we've told you they received a huge multi-million dollar donation, and that can mean a lot for our local Bear County schools. Jessica Weaver, CEO of Communities and Schools San Antonio, she is set to join us tomorrow morning on Leading Essay at 8 a.m. We're going to be talking about that multi-million dollar donation, what it means for our local districts, and how our local schools fare in comparison to schools across the country. If you have any questions, that you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Do you drink coffee in the morning? Yes. How much? How many I, cups? Um, I would say... A two cup or three cup or I one cup or... I space it out because I don't want to crash. Like me, I'm like, are you a two cup or three Yeah, cup? you're a little out of breath. <laughs> don't you start with three shots of espresso? I just, you know, three shots. But if I, if I, <laughs> you know what? I try not to drink in the afternoon. Okay. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Because Thank you for distinguishing. Because we're caffeinated all day. You know who's caffeinated? I hope right he now? is. Jonathan Cotto, he is live at Travis Park for the ninth annual coffee. Look at you, Jonathan. Fancy. What are you drinking? I am going to be highly caffeinated. You know, the first person that comes to mind as I'm sitting out here sipping coffee is our traffic anchor, Stephen Cavazzo, who loves coffee. Um, but, you know, we're enjoying this large coffee mug in the background going off right now. And I'm hanging out here with Shannon. She is uh, the owner of Friday Coffee Roasters. Shannon, good morning. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Now, talk to me a little bit about your participation uh, in this year's uh, San Antonio Coffee Festival. So this is my second year to participate in the festival. Um, I did it two years ago in, in uh, January, and I volunteered the year before. I've become good friends with Linda, and I really just love what she's trying to do with this, just promote coffee culture in San Antonio. Now, this coffee that I'm drinking is delicious. Delicious. What's in this? What's in this mug? So you're drinking a washed arabica from El Salvador, um, and I, I do a meat. That's a medium roast. I do kind of a deeper medium to bring out the body and sweetness in in the coffee. And um, uh, I don't know. I just <laughs> I, that's that's my preference. It's that's, absolutely that's delicious. That's how I roast. Yeah. Um, and then that and that coffee actually is it's high peak coffee, and the son of the farmer lives here in San Antonio. And now, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Now, Shannon, the good thing about this this festival is that part of the proceeds uh, benefits the church at La Vita's food pantry. How does it feel to be a part of a, an event that serves a greater purpose? That, I, I, uh, I love that. And I don't do uh, farmer's markets and such. This is the only event I do all year because of that. So all the roasters here are donating the coffee today. Um, the people that bought tickets uh, paid for their tickets, but the proceeds will go to pay the electricity. And then whatever's left over uh, helps that's the food wonderful. pantry. Yeah, so all the, all the roasters here are donating the coffee that's being served today. Shannon, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Good Morning San Antonio. Morning. Cheers to coffee. Thank you so much, Max, Sarah. We're going to continue to hang out here. There's more than coffee. There's also a pastry vendor that I'll be visiting. Um, so I'll be walking out of here with uh, maybe a little diabetic. Who knows? <laughs> Back to you in the studio, Max and Sarah. So we just need, to be clear, we need a coffee cup. We'll get a coffee cup so we can cheer some later in the show. Tough live shot though, coffee and pastries. I know. I like that big smoking coffee behind them. That was yeah. Cool. Time now, just about 840, 54 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. A teen and a local shoe designer are teaming up to raise awareness for American Heart Month. RJ Marquez shares their story and also had a little surprise for the young boy battling a heart condition. Plus, speaking of coffee. 
Jonathan Coteau's live shot. If you notice the price of a cup of joe has gone up, you are not imagining things like most things. It's getting more expensive. We're going to explain why. 54 degrees at 840 this morning. Sarah Spivey says we have a bit of a cool front blowing in. She'll explain when we come back. I think the theme this morning is definitely coffee. So now we're talking about coffee prices. They hit a new 10 year high this week. David Sears looks at the cause of those rising prices. The price of coffee is soaring, affecting customers. I'm a man who likes a small coffee, and it's always surprised me that the price increase for a small coffee. And retailers. I actually raised the coffee price, uh, the ground, the whole bean coffee price last week, just because we've seen increase. But what about the producers? Meet Luz Andela, an indigenous coffee farmer in southwestern Colombia. For her, the price hike was very good news. I bought a new bed. I had one already, but we needed a new one. With better coffee prices, I could buy that and other small things. The price of coffee has nearly doubled since this time last year. One cause is reduced output last year by the world's largest producer, Brazil, after first a drought and then frost related to extreme weather. But Colombia's coffee, which grows at higher altitude and is of a different variety than Brazil's, was spared. The results, a good business for Colombia's producers. Since the end of last year, we have been able to uh, start buying the coffee from 35 families, uh, all of their production. So, so that has been a, a almost double the production that we were doing just about eight, eight, ten months ago. Native Root is a family-run specialty coffee company that purchases exclusively from indigenous producers like Andela. So if you're looking to save, try online purchases. You can buy directly from the producers, take it away the middleman, and it benefits both the consumer and the producer. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Where will you get your coffee? Well, I, I you know, I buy uh, espresso beans. Oh. I have an espresso machine at my house, and I grind okay. every morning. I grind the, the beans and then make my espresso shots and this is my a, milk. Yeah, I got Sarah, nothing on that. Sarah, don't even act like I make like, bougie coffee, because you just <laughs> are like, I do a pour over every morning. Stop. <laughs> people know how bougie I am. It's okay. okay. You can have bougie coffee. It's Let's allowed. take a look out with the radar right now because we do have some light rain on the radar, mainly to the east of San Antonio. Look at Cuero right now getting a good rain shower and in northern Victoria County getting a good rain shower as well. Unfortunately, though, here in San Antonio, we're really just not expecting any significant rain at all. The chance for rain is only 10% and that would mainly be for a stray passing light rain shower. Most of the rain today will be located east of San Antonio and down across the coastal plain, like what we saw down in Cuero, a rain shower there. Here's the front right now. It's pushing south. It's already moved through San Antonio. Notice that it's not particularly strong. We're not seeing a very steep temperature drop off behind this front upper 40s in the hill country, but it will be a lot colder than yesterday. So in, in retrospect, it, it is going to be a cooler day. Highs will only be in the 50s. And one thing you'll really notice today more than anything is the wind. Winds are sustained from the north right now at about 20 miles per hour. We've already seen wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour and throughout the morning and into the afternoon, we'll have wind gusts of up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. That is enough to knock over any kind of uh, loose patio furniture, or if your trash can is still out by the street, you might be fishing for it later. But tonight after sunset, we're going to see those winds calm and that will allow for a, a chilly evening for us as winds whenever there are winds, it tends to keep the air mixed up. But tonight with those winds calming down, it's going to get chilly quickly. Take a look up to the north. There's plenty of snow across North Texas in the Panhandle. We're not going to get any snow here in San Antonio, but as you can see, most of the rain is to the east of San Antonio around this area of low pressure, and that's where that rain is really going to stay today. Again, the biggest thing are going to be the wind gusts. Winds are already gusting up to 32 in San Antonio, up to 41 in San Angelo. So. This air mass is capable of producing those uh, high wind speeds. Again, most of the rain will be to the east today, only a 10% chance.
present chance for an isolated shower in San Antonio. We should see some sun this afternoon. It's just going to be on the chilly side with temperatures hanging out right in the low to mid 50s all day long. You're going to need the jacket all day long and especially tonight. Once the sun sets, temperatures will drop and will be below freezing tomorrow morning. A light freeze is expected around San Antonio with a forecast morning low right around 30 up in the hill country and out toward the west. Temperatures will be in the 20s, however, so remember uh, make sure your plants are covered up and your pets have a warm place to stay. You don't have to worry about pipes. Looking at tomorrow, though, after the cold start, it's going to be a beautiful day, 65 and sunny, even more gorgeous on Monday. High temperature near 70. We'll be back with more news. Welcome back. He is battling a heart condition and she designs custom shoes. Now they are teaming up for American Heart Month. RJ Marquez tells us about a young team's journey and the surprise message he received from one of his favorite Spurs players to keep fighting. Isaiah Lucio enjoys doing the things that most 13 year olds like to do. He likes spending time with family and friends, playing video games and loves basketball, especially the Spurs. Who are your favorite players right now? DeJounte Murray and Kellen Johnson. And I just started liking him, how he plays, how he hustles, his nickname, the big body. It's that type of spirit that's helped Isaiah through a tough time. He was diagnosed with heart failure in October. It was sad and tough, but I, I got through it. Isaiah had open heart surgery in Austin in November. Doctors put a ventricular assist device, or a VAD, to help his heart get ready for a transplant. But it allowed him to go back home right before Christmas. I was really scared at first, but I still got it. And during his time in the hospital, Isaiah's family connected with Kate Orozco, a San Antonio artist who designs custom shoes under the name Custom Kate. Isaiah's mom ordered him a pair of Fiesta-themed kicks, but they saw an opportunity to help kids in a similar situation. Me and Isaiah decided to design a few pairs of shoes to raffle off um, for um, to raise uh, money for the American Heart Association. Kate says all proceeds will go to the Heart Association. You could get through something so tough. I feel like that's very inspiring for a lot of people. Isaiah has been through a lot throughout his life, several open heart surgeries, and he continues to be a fighter. And he's also gotten a lot of support from his, of course, family, friends, loved ones, classmates, teachers, the school, also getting a little bit of love from one of his favorite Spurs players. What's up, Isaiah? It's Keldon Johnson here, man. Um, man, I just want to give you a shout out and say hello, man. And, you know, they told me about, you know, your heart surgery and that uh, I'm just here to tell you, keep your hopes up, man, and uh, stay in positive spirits and that I'm always here for you, man. And, man, I wish you the best. Go Spurs, go. A surprise message from KJ to keep Isaiah pushing forward. How does that make you feel? I'm great. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Wow. Cool story. That was a really cool story. All right, time now, 8.54. It's 4 degrees out. We'll be right back. All right, Valentine's Day is on Monday. If you need help choosing the right place to celebrate, we have a list of the top 20 best date spots in San Antonio. It's not just romantic spots on the list. It also has mini golf, breakfast spots, have you picked out your Valentine's Day? No, not no? at all. I'm so <laughs> behind. I'm focusing on Super Bowl first. Well, here you go. You can... What? I'm focusing on the Super Bowl first. Oh, okay. I think so. Never mind. <laughs> uh, you can find out all of this right now. Just head to ksat.com. So if you need help finding out the date spot, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to head to ksat.com. <laughs> all right. 856, 54 degrees out. Okay, a new exhibit is celebrating the Alamo City's black pioneers of medicine and their term determination to give African-American community good medical care. That story coming up. And a shootout just north of downtown ends with one person in the hospital and police still searching for two suspects. We're going to have the latest. Federal agents now investigating a human smuggling case right here in San Antonio. Who's in custody and the charges they face? We have those details coming up. And a quick live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that. You can see the camera shaking. That's just a testament to the winds we're seeing this morning. 54 degrees now. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. 9 o'clock this Saturday, February 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yesterday, top tier, picturesque, gorgeous out there. It was there. perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And I was like, is it happening? Is, is this going to be a trend? Mm. But Sarah Spivey's saying, not so fast. <laughs> Well, we got a cold front this morning. <laughs> uh, if you've stepped outside this morning, you already know that it feels a lot cooler outside than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 75. 
Today, we'll be lucky if we get out of the 50s. Take a look outside right now with live cam. We've got some clouds that moved in with the cold front. And we're not going to see any rain here in San Antonio. Really, there's only a 10% chance for a stray shower around the Alamo City this morning. But really, the winds are the biggest story. Winds from the north sustained at 17, but gusting up to 28 miles per hour. And out toward Hondo this morning, we've got a wind gust of 40 miles per hour. It is entirely possible for us to see wind gusts today, 40 to 45 miles per hour. So that that wind will be howling today. Winds are gusting up to 30 miles per hour in Kerrville, 34 in Lost Maples, 35 in Rock Springs. And again, that wind gusts of 40 mile per, miles per hour in Hondo as well as up in the Austin area. Temperatures are in the 50s, but those winds have really made Mountain Cedar make one last stand here. Uh, Mountain Cedar season ends usually by Valentine's Day, but as you can see, Mountain Cedar is high because of those winds. All right, rodeos going on this weekend. First weekend of the rodeo. If you're planning on being out there, know that we'll see some sun in the afternoon, but it's going to be windy all day long and temperatures are only going to hover in the mid 50s. By tonight, though, winds will subside and it'll get chilly. Temperatures are going to fall to near 40 degrees by 10 p.m. As I mentioned, rain chance in San Antonio, not good, only a 10% chance today, but there is some rain around the KSAT 12 viewing area. I'll show you the radar coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New details this morning about the human smuggling incident we first told you about yesterday on GMSA. It happened at the shopping center near Loop 410 and Highway 151 around 3.30 yesterday morning. After speaking with the three men connected to this incident, investigators have learned more about the case. Two men arrested and facing charges for smuggling a group of undocumented immigrants from Mexico to the U.S. Juan Garcia Jr., who we do not have a mugshot of, and Angel Villafranca, both 17 years old. They were part of the group of nearly 30 people arrested yesterday morning after San Antonio police got a call for suspicious people getting others out of a big rig and into other vehicles nearby. This all happening at a popular West Side shopping center. Also arrested was 20 year old Fernando Castanon, who we also do not have a mug shot of. He was arrested and taken into custody of Homeland Security. Castanon told investigators that he was hired by Garcia to provide security and that Villafranca told him to make sure some of the undocumented immigrants were moved to other vehicles and the rest were moved to stash houses throughout the city. During his interview with SAPD sex crimes detectives, Garcia admitted to taking money to help transport the undocumented immigrants. He also said he recruited Villafranca to be a part of the deal, along with a third unidentified person. Villafranca confirmed Garcia's story with police. So in all, a total of 25 undocumented immigrants were identified that were in the trailer. Now they said they paid a fee to be led into the country without the proper documents. All right, first responders having to use the jaws of life overnight to rescue a man involved in a crash. And this all happened just outside San Antonio College. So take a look. This was happened around 2 a.m. A vehicle T-boned by a white truck at the intersection of San Pedro Avenue near West Ashby. Police on the scene telling us the driver of that truck had to be rescued by first responders using the jaws of life. The passenger and the vehicle passenger in the vehicle and the other driver also injured in the crash. Police do believe alcohol could be a factor. Charges are still pending. A driver hits a woman in the middle of the street, but police are calling it an accident. The woman was trying to cross Southwest Military in the city's south side around 11 o'clock last night. She was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The driver did stop to render aid and will not be facing any charges. All right, it has been the topic of the morning coffee. So you, what did you do? Three shots of espresso, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make it at home, and I'm over here like, you know, K said has free coffee. Yeah, but like I have my 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 espresso machine at mm. home. I have my own milk and my own stevia. Hey, but if you want a variety of coffee this morning, you can find it at the ninth annual coffee festival. That's where we find Jonathan Cotto at Travis Park. Are you caffeinated yet, Jonathan? I am ha highly caffeinated, Max and Sarah. Where was all this coffee earlier this morning? I really needed it, but I think I, I found the fix. I have the fix. And let me just tell you, this is like a beer festival for all coffee lovers. The gates just open. 
you didn't think there was coffee lovers in San Antonio, think again. All these people right now just getting samples of all this wonderful coffee available here this morning. The music, the bands on stage, everything is officially kicked off here at Travis Park this morning. Now, let me tell you something about the coffee here. There's third day coffee seeking, the best coffee this side of heaven. It happens to be one of my favorite coffees. It's really good. I usually take two sugars, two creams in my coffee, but with this one here, you don't need anything at all. You can enjoy it just as it is. Owner Jose Alaniz, how are you this morning? Good, I'm doing fantastic. Now, your your coffee is something special here. What's what's the, the, the secret? Well, the secret is that our coffee is hand selected by the farmers in Honduras. And so they take all the impurities out, all the pieces of coffee that may not be good. And so we get a really high quality coffee to start with. Now, we don't just take the good coffee, we take the good coffee and we roast it with mesquite. And so that gives our coffee a very unique flavor that translates to not, not needing sugar, not needing cream. I think adding mesquite to anything just makes the taste better, whether we're talking about coffee or even steaks for that matter. Now let's take a look here at some of your packaging here. We know um, there's, there's two kinds that you have here right now, correct? Yes. So uh, we have a uh, Legacy Farms, which is a, uh, it's a, um, a red, lim red honey processed Limpira. And then we have the Finca Santos. Finca Santos is an individual that works for Legacy Farms, that Legacy Farms in turn is helping him grow his own coffee. So this is all coffee with a mission. It's not just great coffee. Uh, we're, we support First, our first priority is to share the gospel. Our second priority is to, to uh, support our veterans in the local community through various charities. And then the last thing we do, we support these farmers in Honduras. We're actually building a church there right now. Uh, we're helping support that. And so uh, the coffee is, is great to begin with, but when we add our own mix of mesquite, it just changes the coffee. Yeah. And it, it's that's why we call it the best coffee this side of heaven. My friend, God, country, and? Coffee. That's right. Back to you in the studio, Max Sarah. Okay. If you have big plans this weekend up in Kendall County, you definitely want to plan ahead. We have some big closures out there that, again, you are going to want to be aware of. Let's go ahead and take you in up to Kendall County there off of I-10. Now, this closure is going to be a long one, a 56-hour continuous closure of the full main lanes of the I-10 and eastbound uh, travel lanes between State Highway 46 and US 87. Now, this removal of this bridge will actually allow crews out there to start working on the new westbound State Highway 46 bridge construction that Again, we'll take some time, but this will all start at 8 in the evening and wrap Monday morning. So let's take a closer look in as you talk about some travel routes there for drivers. Now, the westbound lanes of I-10, keep in mind that the frontage road traffic will continue through the State Highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now, that's located near Fredericks Creek. Keep in mind, off-duty uniformed officers are going to control that traffic movement right at the State Highway 46 intersection, so be on the lookout for them. And if you are going to be traveling east, Eastbound. Let's take a look there because the frontage road traffic will continue through the state highway 46 intersection, then get back onto the main lanes at the next available entrance ramp. Now that's located west of the US 87 interchange. Another off duty officer again, keep in mind they're going to be out there controlling that traffic moving at the intersection there at state highway 46. Again, as a reminder, this will all start at eight in the evening Friday and will continue throughout the weekend and wrap up Monday morning according to TxDOT. And then stay with KSAT for the very latest on this construction up there in I. Thank All you, Stephen. Right. Stephen Cavazos on the weekend. Thank you so much. 909, 54 degrees out. Celebra celebrating Black History Month, we're going to tell you about a new exhibit honoring black medical pioneers. And take a look at this. So this is a new cargo ship designed to be friendly to the environment. Could it be the wave of the future? We're going to explain. See what we did there? The wave because it rides on the waves. We saw that. Also, you can see this camera oh. shaking out there because Sarah Spivey says that wind, it's here. She'll let us know how long this cool friend's going to stick around for when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. A new cargo ship could be the future of the sea freight industry. So the new vessel could decarbonize a third of the world's existing fleet. The ship's founder named the Energy Observer 2. It was presented this week at the UN's One Ocean Summit in France. All right, so engineers designed this cargo ship to run on liquid hydrogen. That would be produced on land with carbon neutral energy, such as nuclear energy or other renewable energy sources. The vessel can carry up to 70 tons of liquid hydrogen and travel about 4,000 nautical miles. 
In addition, it has four sets of sails to harness the wind, and it uses wind propulsion to reduce the ship's fuel consumption up to 40%. 40% designed for heavy loads. The ship can carry up to 240 freight containers around the continent. But here is the problem, like we see with a lot of these energy sources. The ship currently costs twice the amount that a traditional freight ship costs because of all the research and development. Now, the founder, though, he is working on ways to make it more cheap, more economically viable. So this could be the future. We're just going to have to wait until it's a cheaper option. And it uses wind. And Sarah, today, that's a story for <laughs> us locally. Absolutely, Sarah. We are seeing wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour locally because of a cold front. But there are some showers out there, not around San Antonio, but southeast of San Antonio. You can see near Cuero, near Goliad and Victoria, we're seeing some light rain showers. Those are the areas that are going to have the better chance for rain today and east toward Houston. But as I mentioned here in San Antonio, little to no chance for rain, unfortunately for us. And we need some rain. You know, drought conditions are expanding, especially out to the west. But across the state of Texas, some snowfall in North Texas this morning behind that front and some heavier rain off in East Texas as well. Again, we're just not going to see much in the way of precipitation here in San Antonio. The biggest thing we'll notice and you'll notice are the winds. Winds are gusting up to 40 miles per hour up in Dallas right now behind this front, up to 28 miles per hour here in San Antonio, up to 37 miles per hour in San Angelo. And we're going to continue to see this gustier, these gustier wind conditions push south. And today will be a gusty, gusty day. Not incredibly cold behind this front. Now we are seeing temperatures below freezing in the panhandle, but we will be slightly below freezing by tomorrow morning. Most of today, we're pretty much going to hang out right where we're at right now. Temperatures are going to be fairly steady. We'll be in the 50s for most of the day. It's 58 in Hondo, 54 in Uvalde, 50 in Kerrville. Cold spot on the map is Rock Springs at 45 uh, degrees. But again, those winds, you will notice them. This is a look at this afternoon. Winds gusting in San Antonio up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. That is strong enough to knock over some light patio furniture. And if you're at the rodeo, could knock off your cowboy hat. Uh, but by this evening, temperatures are going to cool down very quickly because winds are going to calm down. Winds will calm down around sunset and because of that, temperatures will tumble tonight. So make sure you have a jacket if you have Saturday night plans. All right, as I mentioned in the future cast, the better chance for rain will be east of San Antonio, but even then it's not a great chance for rain uh, and we'll be looking at some sunshine this afternoon. In fact, looking at the satellite right now, although it's cloudy in San Antonio, you can see that out toward Del Rio, it's sunny, Rock Springs, it's sunny, and there are pockets of sunshine across areas out toward Gonzales, Hallettsville, in Victoria. So even though it's cloudy right now, we are going to see skies clear into the afternoon. Um, and again, temperatures will hold steady today in the low to mid 50s. It's going to be windy while the sun is up. Once the sun goes down, winds will go down as well, and it's going to get chilly. Temperatures are going to drop to near 40 degrees by 10. And tomorrow morning, we're anticipating a light freeze. So take a look at morning temperatures tomorrow in the 20s across the hill country, 20s out west, right around 30 degrees in San Antonio. So we'll probably only be below freezing in San Antonio for at most a couple of hours, but still make sure your pets have a warm place to stay. If you want to be extra careful about any kind of sensitive vegetation, bring those plants in or cover them up. But in spite of the cold start tomorrow, we're going to have a gorgeous Sunday. After the light freeze, temperatures will warm up quickly under complete sunshine. We'll be at 65 degrees for the high tomorrow. On Valentine's Day itself, we'll be looking at a chilly start as well, but comfortable in the 70s in the afternoon. Looking ahead, a small chance for rain Wednesday and Thursday. We really don't have any big rainmakers in the forecast this week for us, but we'll continue to keep you updated. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 917, 54 degrees out. We got some high school basketball playoffs. We have a lot going on and a special moment for one athlete at Bernie. We're going to explain. And bringing quality medical care to San Antonio's African-American community. We're talking about a local exhibit honoring some of the city's black pioneers in medicine. That story after the break. So the theme for 
Black History Month for this year is health and wellness, and it just so happens there's an online exhibit honoring San Antonio's black medical pioneers. The exhibit was created by the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum. Our Jesse Degliato tells us about the impact. They were the barrier breakers, pioneers in medicine, each in their own way. Now being showcased in this online exhibit hosted by SACAM, they were the first in their fields during a far different time, most of them before civil rights and equal opportunity. Yet they were determined to help San Antonio's east side community. I can't imagine how much courage that took to um, just be able to say, I'm going to do this. A fourth year medical student from North Texas, Temi Ade Ju Yigbe, says having read their stories in SACAM's online exhibit. Just gives me courage to continue to walk forward in this path, even though it is very difficult. For a semi-retired pediatrician who now counsels LGBTQ youth and their parents, the exhibit's message is clear. All the possibilities, if you just put your mind to it, that's the legacy. Best known as Dr. Lulu, Uchenna Ume says given the disparities back then, those early doctors had to rely on their instincts and their hearts. Be honest and kind and compassionate and just believe in the work that they were doing. Grateful though they are to those black medical pioneers. I think that we have a long way to go with regards to representation of African Americans in medicine. For young African Americans considering medical careers and for others wishing they could, Dr. Lulu says the key is believing that they can. And once you say I can, nobody can say you can't. So I say go for it. That's it. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now is 922, 54 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. A special moment last night at Bernie High School. The Greyhounds hosted Bandera and get this senior Devin Stiles. He was only eight points away from reaching the thousand point milestone for his career. Took the court. This is late second quarter and one. He fought the under the rim and here we go. Put it back. Count it. Made the free throw a thousand points and he broke the thousand point mark on that next free throw. He scored 14 points. Bernie won huge 54 to 24. They are still undefeated in district play. So congratulations, Devin. Congratulations, Bernie. Undefeated. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. 926, 54 degrees now. Okay, the latest on the Pfizer's decision not to ask the FDA approval for its two-dose vaccine for children under the age of five reactions from parents of young children. And gunfire just north of downtown involving a VIA police officer. We're going to explain and tell you what police are now looking for. Good morning and welcome back and happy Saturday 930 this morning, February 12th. What was that sound? I don't know. It was just gremlins. <laughs> I was running. I made it. You made, made it. it. We, we made, made it. it. We're here. And I'm caffeinated this morning. <laughs> yes. We're going to check in with Jonathan Cote. Is that a coffee? What is it? The it's the ninth annual coffee festival in Travis Park. So there you go. Lots of caffeine going on this morning. Yeah, we checked in with them earlier, Sarah Spivey. It was a little windy out there. Yeah, you're gonna if you have coffee today, you're going to want it hot because it's chilly out there this morning, especially compared to yesterday. Yesterday, we got up to 75 degrees today. We're pretty much going to coast in the 50s all day long. Take a look outside right now. We've got some clouds that moved in with a cold front. No rain in San Antonio. We really don't anticipate anything other than a stray shower here and there throughout the day today. So don't bank on the rain. Bank on the wind. Winds are from the north sustained near 20 miles per hour. We've already seen gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour around San Antonio, but elsewhere. The winds are gusting up to 40 miles per hour, like out in Hondo right now. Wind gusts of 32 at Stinson, wind gusts of 33 in Kerrville. In a wider view here, 33 in New Braunfels, 40 mile per hour wind gusts in Austin. These winds, not only are they going to keep our temperatures in the 50s today, but they've also kicked up the mountain cedar. Mountain cedar is high today, close to 3,000. Now, typically, mountain cedar season comes to an end around Valentine's Day. So this looks like mountain cedar is trying to make one last stand this season. Molds are present, but in low amounts. Now, in addition to the cooler weather, with it being windy, just a reminder that any kind of outdoor burning is highly discouraged whenever we have high wind gusts and dry conditions out there. Outdoor burn bans, in effect, for your, uh, each 
each county here in the red. Notice that San Antonio is not included, but outdoor burning is discouraged because it is going to be windy today. 55 for the high, a light freeze tomorrow morning, but a beautiful Sunday as we wrap up your weekend. We've got some rain in the KSAT 12 viewing area. I'll show you the radar in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a terrifying situation just north of downtown. A shootout between a VIA police officer and multiple suspects. It ends with one man in the hospital. This is what we know right now. Around 1130 last night, a security guard at a club near the intersection of North Main and Maple Street. They flagged down the VIA officer. The security guard said there were numerous fights involving three specific suspects. The VIA officer ran the license plate of the suspect's car. It came back that the vehicle was stolen. So the VIA officer attempted to approach the vehicle. That's when someone inside the vehicle started shooting. Now that officer returned fire, hitting one of the suspects. And that suspect later showed up to University Hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Right now, no other suspects have been identified, but police are still working, trying to figure out what exactly happened and who is responsible. Let's get to the latest report of the number of COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. It shows the number is going down. Yesterday, Metro Health reported more than 800 new cases but eight more people have died from this virus. Meanwhile, there are 785 COVID-19 patients in the hospital, 211 in the ICU and 112 on ventilators. The last time we saw numbers this low was about a month ago. All right, now to a big update in the vaccine. Parents of children under the age of five years old are gonna have to wait a little bit longer to get the kids vaccinated. That's right, ABC's Phil Lipoff is in New York City with the story. This morning, a major setback in the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines for children under the age of five. Pfizer delaying its request for FDA approval of its two-dose vaccine for the age group. It makes sense for us to wait until we have the data from uh, the evaluation of a third dose uh, before taking action. The FDA's Committee of Independent Advisors says it will now be about two months before any word on approval, leaving some parents concerned. So long as all of our family members are vaccinated, I think we're somewhat comfortable, but obviously it provides another level of protection if our daughter was also vaccinated as well. I understand that parents are anxious. The best thing that parents can do out there is what they have been doing. Have your kids mask up when appropriate. The FDA is, however, authorizing a new monoclonal antibody treatment from Eli Lilly that shows promising results fighting Omicron. The therapy will be given to COVID patients early on in their infection. And a new study from the CDC suggesting the effectiveness of boosters may be reduced after four months from 91 to 78 percent. Nationwide, the U.S. continuing to see a drop in positive cases and some mask mandates are being lifted. But health officials caution Americans to keep the numbers in perspective. Nearly 99 percent of U.S. counties are still reporting high transmission rates. In New York City, workers protesting COVID-19 vaccine mandates as 3,000 workers face termination. Karen Rosado has been an FDNY paramedic for 10 years. We want to make sure that it's known that we're not quitting. We're being terminated on our choice. Ahead of tomorrow's Super Bowl, some health experts are concerned an event that size could actually act as a super spreader, even though so many people have been vaccinated. Back to the COVID treatment by Eli Lilly. The Biden administration says it plans to buy 600,000 doses. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. It's being called a partial defeat of the state's elections overhaul, and it happened just days ahead of the, this year's first primary. Yesterday's ruling by U.S. District Judge Javier Rodriguez right here in San Antonio weakens new rules that make it a crime for election officials to proactively help voters get a ballot by mail. It orders Texas not to enforce that narrow part of the law against Harris County, which in 2020 tried to send more than 2 million Houston voters mail-in ballot applications during the pandemic. Texas is expected to appeal that decision. All right, it has been a topic we've been talking about throughout the morning. Is your meat, this is the espresso shot. This is the espresso pinky out? Is that, or is that just tea? Know. I don't know. Okay. Just, me in the morning is like this with the espresso <laughs> shots. So last time we talked to Jonathan, he was talking to us about a local coffee company that I think they operate out of like Honduras and they use mesquite to uh, to roast the coffee. Yeah, beans. which was awesome. It sounds delicious. All right. We're going to check in with Jonathan. He's live at Travis Park for the ninth annual coffee festival. Jonathan, is Jonathan there? There he is. There he is. 
<laughs> Here I am, highly caffeinated at Travis Park, and I'm not alone. We're all highly caffeinated. Is that right, ladies? Yeah. Yeah, having a lot of samples. Uh, how many samples have you had so far? Oh my God, I've had about four. And let me tell you, I'm ready to run around this place. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? How's it going? Just two, just two. Just two. Yeah. Now, this is the ninth annual San Antonio Coffee Festival. Have you been to one before? Yes. Uh, prior to the pandemic, at the La Villita, we had a fun time there. Now, what is your favorite cup of coffee and how do you drink it? Just regular coffee, black. Yeah. And what about you, ma'am? How do you like your coffee? I love my coffee with a little cream, but I'm doing a little something different today. Trying them, trying to get the flavors, the beans, the flavors, and just trying to just do something different. I love that. You know, I love my coffee with a lot of sugar and a lot of cream, but some of these roasters, some of this coffee is amazing. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. All right, ladies. Well, let's uh, cheers to uh, more coffee. Yeah. Back to you in the studio, Max and Sarah. Calm down. <laughs> be out there. And uh, don't worry, you can head out there just I a little know bit. I know, that festival's happening throughout the afternoon. Thank you, Jonathan. The one lady was my favorite. I've had four, I'm ready to run around. I can do laps. Yeah, <laughs> time now, 937, 54 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. All right, Spurs looking great on the rodeo road trip. It is a first game back though without Derek White on the roster. We're gonna explain that and give you the highlights from the big win. David Elder giving us a preview Ooh. of what's coming up on today's episode of Texas Eats, here's a hint, snack food. We love snacks. We love snacks. You know what else we love? What? Oh, we don't love this. Mm. Windy, not much sunshine out there, 54 degrees. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. People try to say that they're flautas, but they're dressed a little different and they're much smaller. These are the tapatillos that you can get when you come out to La Maceta, okay? Okay, so it's shredded beef. Okay. And then we hand roll them and we fry them and top them with tomatillo, Mexican crema. That one is dressed with Mexican crema, queso cotija, and the homemade ranchero salsa. Okay, here we go. This is ranchero style. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Oh my. Here, give me some foot. Yes. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Fantastic. It is a lot of work, a lot of love, and a lot of patience. <laughs> you can taste it. Thank oh, you. Wow. All of the food here is made from scratch, and you can tell when you take that bite. Everything just has this brightness to it that you can tell there's a lot of love and a lot of time put into it. I'm in. I need it. Yeah, this is the time of the show when we get very hungry. Yeah. Mm. Or right, Sarah, I was telling Max uh, the last two days I've raked up like I mean just bags and bags of leaves, and I'm so thankful I finished yesterday before the wind gusts. Come. Yeah. What kind of tree? Oak tree? Oh no, not oak tree. Um, like the big, the big maple leaves, yeah. and then the hackberry leaves are oh, absolutely everywhere. Well, mountain cedar is actually up today, Sarah, because of the winds. So winds are going to knock off some of these uh, tree leaves around San Antonio. As far as rain goes, though. It's going to stay dry in San Antonio. There's really only a 10% chance for a stray shower around the Alamo City. Most of the rain today will be confined along the coastal plain. You can see a few light showers out near Goliad and Victoria, as well as off to the east toward Houston. Some showers out there this morning as well. But here in San Antonio, we really only got the clouds and the wind from the cold front, and that was anticipated. Cloudy outside right now, but we will see some sun later on today. Looking at temperatures, 54 degrees. Winds are from the north, gusting up to nearly 30 miles per hour right now and yesterday we were sunny and in the 70s today we're pretty much just going to coast in the mid 50s all day long around San Antonio and you will notice the wind this is a look at sustained winds so winds are from the north sustained at 25 miles per hour in New Braunfels 25 miles per hour in Hondo right around 20 miles per hour in San Antonio and of course gusts are even higher than that we've seen wind gusts of 40 miles per hour already out in Hondo and through the afternoon we'll see wind gusts of up to 40 to 45 miles per hour in many spots. But tonight after sunset, after 6 p.m., we're really going to see those winds calm down. 
Calm winds, clear skies tonight. That means it's going to get very cold this evening. We'll show you that forecast in just a bit. For now, look across the state of Texas. There's actually some flurries across North Texas and across the panhandle as well. Any substantial rain is again near Houston and East Texas, and we're on the dry side of this system, the dry and windy side. Here's a look at current wind gusts. You can see that well behind this front, the winds are gusting. There's a high pressure system out near the panhandle and the difference between this low and this high is what's creating these gusty winds. Uh, and we're going to see that with us through about sunset. Again, most of the rain today, all of the rain will be east of San Antonio. And even then, not a great chance for rain out toward the east, about a 30% chance. But we will be seeing clearing skies this afternoon. And so uh, at least we're going to see some sunshine later on today. You can look at satellite right now and the temperatures, and there's actually a some peaks of sun out near Seguin at the moment. Temperatures pretty much going to stay where they're at right now throughout the day. Some peaks of sun up in Kerrville and then the further west you go, it's totally sunny in Del Rio. So this clearing line is going to be working its way into San Antonio so that we will see soon. It's just going to be chilly and windy today. Again, clearing skies, mostly sunny by the afternoon. Winds sustained from the north at 20 but gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. Once the sun sets at 621, winds will calm down and temperatures will drop. We'll be in the 30s by midnight and for the start of your Sunday tomorrow, it is going to be cold. In fact, it'll be below freezing, hard freeze possible in the hill country and out west, but just a light freeze around San Antonio. We'll probably only maximum spend a couple of hours at or below freezing a morning low right near 30 degrees tomorrow morning. But if you have a home garden, you know which plants are sensitive to a uh, cold and you might want to bring them in or cover them up. After the cold start tomorrow morning, it'll be And then Monday, Valentine's Day looks really nice too. Love for Valentine's Day and just a small chance for rain in the week ahead. Wish we could say we had a better chance for rain, but right now it looks isolated Wednesday and Thursday. See what you did there? Lovely. Lovely. There you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Time to talk sports. Here we go. As you can imagine, DeJounte Murray and his feelings a little bit first came back without Derek White. Remember, Derek White got traded to the Celtics, but DeJounte Murray, the all-star, he was all about the Hawks. So right off the jump, Doug McDermott filling in from threes. Three from three for three. There you go. Starting off for a 12-point lead, the hot shooting that pretty much lasted the whole game. There we go, DeJounte catch and shoot three, a 16-point lead, Keldon Johnson. He has been killing it as of late. He got hot from beyond the arc. He actually, <laughs> wow, there we go. Here's a fun fact. Spurs tied a franchise record for threes in a quarter. They had eight. So the score was 43 to 29 after just one quarter. The Hawks did cut the lead down to six, but the Spurs would come back with a 13 to two run capped off with a Zach Collins three. Another one in seconds before the half. Jakob launched it from midcourt. Nothing but three. Second half. Let's go. All right, here we go. Look at that. Pick and this is my favorite part. Spurs oh. of old. Look at that. Dunkaroo. Dun yes. We're bringing that back. Dunkaroo. Here we go. Dev Vassell. He was in the starting lineup. Remember, no more Derek White. All right, so Josh Primo. He looked good. Hawks did what they could. And here's another one. DeJounte with another triple-double. Franchise record-breaking triple-double. So... He got that last rebound, and really all you need to know is that it worked out well last night for the Spurs. But don't worry, they're back in action tonight because we're on the rodeo road trip. I hope you appreciate, you know, how hard I work, and, you know, that's, that's the only thing I care about. I don't care about the accolades or all the individual stuff. Uh, I want to help my team win, and, you know, I want my peers, the coaches, and, ex-NBA players just to understand and appreciate how hard I work. And it is paying off. Like we said, franchise record, triple-double. So last night, the Spurs, first game without three players, one of them a starter after they were traded on the day of the trade deadline. Derek White, Drew Eubanks, and Thad Young traded in exchange for two first-round picks and a total of three second-round choices. Technically, we got Goran Dragic, 
Tomas Sadaransky and Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford. Not in uniform because, well, they're not with the team yet. So following the team's win in Atlanta, we were able to get reaction to the Spurs trading frenzy. You know, at the end of the day, it's a business and we're here to play basketball. We're not here to play basketball and be in the front office. So, you know, that that just really what it was. Uh, you know, we moved on, you know, because we got to win basketball games. Uh, you know, we, we wish them guys the best. We love them. Uh, we got relationships forever. Uh, but at this time, you know, it's just us, you know, sticking to it and, and trying to win basketball games. And that is exactly what they did. They won last night in great fashion. Derek White also first game with the Celtics. He also won. So there you go. Spurs go. Go Spurs go. 949, 54 degrees out. All right. Breaking barriers for the next generation of female Secret Service agents. We introduce you to a woman who was one of the first females to serve as an agent. In 1970, a group of five women made history becoming the first females to become Secret Service agents. So one of those women have actually been living in South Texas for most of her life, and she even became the first female anchor to be on a morning show in Corpus Christi. Love this story. I had the honor to speak with Katherine Childers about the holes she shot through the glass ceiling and what it was like protecting people like the Kennedy children. Do it scared. It's South Texas resident Katherine Childers' mantra. When her father was teaching her how to shoot a 22 rifle as a little girl, she told her father, Daddy, I'm scared. His reply, then do it scared. And she did. And it's how she has lived her whole life, including being part of the first five women to become Secret Service agents in 1970. Any major federal service in the country, they had never hired women. And when they did, I think we all were frightened of the fact that if we failed, we would probably fail for all women because it was essentially an experiment. For the three years she spent as an agent, she protected a wide range of people from presidents to world leaders. She was fondly called the pistol packing nanny when she was charged with protecting the Kennedy children, Caroline and John Jr., while traveling with former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. To be in that position of responsibility for her, for the nation that had just been heartbroken for these children. Um, it was it was quite an amazing assignment. She recalls one of the last conversations she had with the former first lady. The last time uh, I saw her said, uh, oh, Miss Clark, you live such an interesting life because I just returned from protecting the Queen of Spain at the Apollo 14 blast off where Neil Armstrong was sitting to my right. Childers' life didn't stop getting interesting when she left the Secret Service in 1973. She moved to Corpus Christi where she married her husband and became one of the first women in Corpus Christi to anchor a morning show and also host the show South Texas People on KIII TV3 News for 17 years. She started a number of charities in Corpus Christi and has written a couple of books, including her newest one, Scared Fearless, about her time as a Secret Service agent. And by the way, those first five women didn't fail. 50 years later, we're still alive. The five of us still communicate and they just celebrated the 50th anniversary of women. And there are now 500 women in the Secret Service, which started with five. Are there enough? No. Are there enough men? No. Are there always the perfect situation? No. But we we got the door open. Now my, my message is keep going forward, keep being positive and work together to make the whole mission or whatever you're doing better. Wow, that's really, amazing. Really enjoy doing this story. We'll debrief it on Monday on GMSA at 9 a.m. All right, time now, 9.55, it's four degrees out. Well, love can break your heart and the bank scammers paying on people's emotions have walked away with millions of dollars. Tomorrow on GMSA, we share some tips to protect your heart and your money. Winds are gusting up to 40 miles per hour out there, all because of a cold front that moved through earlier. That's going to keep our temperatures in the 50s today, about 20 degrees cooler than yesterday. We will see some sun, though, in the afternoon, and tonight it's going to get chilly. In fact, we'll be looking at a morning low near 30 degrees tomorrow morning. Mountain Cedar is high because of those winds, so if you're wheezing and sneezing, that's the reason. Again, 30 degrees early tomorrow morning, but we'll be warming up nicely tomorrow. 65 and sunny for Super Bowl Sunday, and on Monday, will be nice and sunny too. 70 degrees, 71 on Tuesday, and even warmer on Wednesday. Small chance for rain in the week ahead. All right, it was funny when you said if you're wheezing and sneezing, right on cue, you sniffled. 
I sniffled. Yeah. I, Did you realize? It's like it? breathing, you know, yeah. so <laughs> allergy season, you just don't even know. All right, well, that is it for us here on GMSA Saturday morning. Thank you so much for watching, joining us this morning. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Hey, Texas Eats is next. Stay warm, y'all.